Hello, Crossword. My name is Autumn, and here are your announcements for today. This Saturday, April 27th, at 10 a.m., we will host our next Bread of Life Outreach Giveaway. This is a time when we bless our community with groceries and other basic needs, including clothing and shoes, donations of canned vegetables and fruits, condiments, rice, pasta, sauces, dry baking ingredients, essential personal care items like toothpaste, body wash, lotion, deodorant, and mouthwash, and professional clothing and shoes are always welcome. No time to shop? Your financial gifts help us purchase these needed items. If using online giving, choose Food Drive Fund. And in person, mark Food Drive on your envelope. Blessings to those who help us show everyone the love of Christ. Thank you to all the seniors who turned in their scholarship applications. We look forward to celebrating with you on Saturday, May 4th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Winston Women's Ministries 9th Annual Scholarship Luncheon, right here in the court. This is village business, and everyone is welcome to join in the celebration. Tickets are only $80. In order to prepare a food count, we ask that you purchase your tickets now. A portion of all ticket sales will directly contribute to the scholarships our students receive. Save the date. The annual Chosen Youth Retreat is July 19th to the 21st, and we need parents and guardians to plan now to set aside funds for your teens to experience this transformative experience with their peers in Christ. Limited scholarships may be available for those who need them. This will be a time of fun, fellowship, team building, games, the word, and worship. We are also in need of volunteer chaperones to lend a hand, especially college-age students who may be home for the summer. If interested, reach out to Pastor Max McCloskey for more information. And with that being said, now over to Jamal with Life Groups. Thank you, Autumn. Have you been involved in the various life groups at Crosswords Church? If not, we encourage you to get involved ASAP. There is no better time than now to elevate your spiritual walk. We are also kicking off the first session of the new members orientation on Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. If you are a new member, this is your opportunity to dive into the heart of Crosswords Church's mission and vision, hearing directly from Bishop Sykes himself. Sign up at the link on the screen or scan the QR code on the screen. At Crossword, we're committed to ensuring you understand Crosswords purpose and how you play a vital role in fulfilling it. See you there. Navigating life after separation or divorce can be challenging, but you are not alone. If you're seeking support and healing, we're here for you. Join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. in the court building for our Divorce Care Support Group. This safe space is tailored to help you rediscover yourself and heal from the journey. Facilitated by ministers Lynn and Ozell Butler and Minister Rodney and Tamara Bowen. Our group offers understanding, care, and practical guidance to help you move forward. Through a combination of video sessions from experts and group discussions, you'll gain valuable insights and connect with others on similar paths. Registrations are ongoing and you're welcome to join us at any point. Secure your spot by registering at the provided link. Space is limited, so don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to walk this journey with you. Doing church together is fun. Invite your friends and loved ones to worship service with you. We have a great ministry at Crossword, and it is important we share the good news of Jesus Christ. If you intend online, no problem. You can host your Crossword watch party from anywhere. If you are local, we would love to see you and your family in the house at 9 a.m. for the first service or 11 a.m. for the second service. Your invitation plants the seed. We will water it with the word and God will help them grow. Let's do our part to get our loved ones, our neighbors, co-workers, and schoolmates in the house of God. Well, Crossword, these are your announcements for the week. At the end of service, we will partake in our celebration of giving. This is a time when we come together cheerfully to give our tithe and offerings not out of compulsion, but truly in love, as an act of worship. There are several ways to give. The church app, online at crosswordchurch.tv slash give, or crosswordchurch.org slash give, or in person by cash, check, or money order. Take time to prepare your gift to the Lord, and get ready as we open our service in a word of prayer. 
May your spiritual ears be open to hear what God has for you today. Amen, amen. Crossword, did you come to praise him? Come on, we can do better than that. Crossword, did you come to praise him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe the word says, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord, right? We could be in jail right now. We could be dead right now, but we are here, so we might as well give them everything we got. Can you give them more than that, Crossword? It's not for show. It's for Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, right where you at, come on, shake somebody's hand, hug somebody, smile at somebody, say hello to somebody. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I see you, Minister Shell. I love you, baby. I see you. I see you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I see you, Ty. I see you, hallelujah. I see you, Donnie. I see you, Trey. I see you. I see you, Nicole. I see you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Come on, let's look to the Lord. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for right now, Father God. You didn't have to give us this very second, this very moment, this very hour, this very day. But since you did, Lord God, we want to go all out for you, Father God. We're done going out for this world. We're done going out for every, every, every other thing but you, Lord God. We want to be about your will, your way. Yahweh is who we serve, Father God. Jehovah is who we serve, Lord God. Jehovah Tiskanu is who we serve, Lord God. And Lord God, we want to do that until we ten toes up, Father God. Please forgive us for our sins. We know that we fall short. Hence why we're here to get your word, that food for the soul, Lord God. We need it right now, Lord God. You know exactly what your people are going through, what your children are going through. You know where we're hurting, Father God. Can you heal? Because you're Jehovah Rapha all by yourself, Father God. You know, Lord God, that we just want to just worship you right now in spirit and truth, Lord God. So please touch the man of God as he brings your word. Lord, may we hear it and then leave here and apply it, Lord God. We're not leaving here the way we came. We're going to be better because you're better to us, Father God. Lord God, please love us like only you can. And now may the grace of God and, and the love of Jesus Christ and, and Lord God, your Holy Spirit, rest through and abide in this service and the next one. And all the saints of God said amen, amen, amen. Come on, y'all, take us to the throne. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God another round of applause. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are believing? on a promise that God has given you on today. I need you to do one thing for me. I need you to believe that it's done. It is done. Whatever you have prayed on, whatever it is that you believe God for, I need you to believe that it's done. It's already done. Come on, look to your neighbor and say, it's already done. Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's already done. Now stand on it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's done. Yeah. What I shall be, I already am. It's done. Oh, yes, it is. God has worked it out on my behalf. My eyes may not see it. Receiving it will pass. It's already done. Come on, help me out today. Hallelujah. It's done.
each and every day. You heard me. You heard me. Every time I pray, you kept me. You kept me each and every day. testimonies. We're going to talk about some stuff today. I'm glad God saved me from me. That's, I wasn't worried about the devil. It was me that was, was wrong. It was me that was acting out of, out of character. It was me. And I'm so glad that God saved me, redeemed me, and held me in his care and saved me from myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, somebody. God is good. God is good. I, I, I guess y'all can tell I'm a little excited right now. But God's been good to me, y'all. God has been good to me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for this Sunday morning. We thank you for allowing us to come back into this, this space, this place that's been dedicated unto your honor, oh God. Lord, I ask that you would accept, accept our praise this morning. And Lord, as we accept your word, Lord, I ask that you, that you would preach to your people using me as your vessel, your sounding board, oh God. Lord, you've already spoke to me. Allow me to speak to your people on your behalf, oh God. Use your word before you use me, oh God. Lord, I ask that whatever is said and done here today that would have an effect on your people, that they would live out a life in which you've already given us through your son, Jesus Christ, the indwelling of your Holy Spirit and the impartment of your word, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would just manifest some great things from your kingdom unto all of your people today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Amen. God is good, everybody. I don't know about y'all, but God is good. I, I, I told Pastor Coop this morning, I almost had to call him last night at like 11 o'clock at night because I was so excited about the word. I had to run downstairs, talk to my wife, because I don't know if any of this has ever happened to any of you. You know how you're reading, you're studying, you get into the word, and the, the, the spirit is upon you, and your whole body get goosebumps? Yeah, yeah, anybody ever get that? I, I know it can't just be me. But God's word is awesome. Yes. So the, the, the things in which we're going to talk about, which is a continuation on the series that Bishop has already been preaching and teaching about, uh, we know, we know that with Christ, we're going to make it, y'all. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. And the subject that we have this morning is your testimony and praise matters. It matters. And we're coming from Ephesians 3, excuse me, Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 4. And uh, we're going to read that together, y'all. Let us read. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every special bl blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Hallelujah. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Yeah. 
Let that just sink in for a moment. Because God has done something special for us. That God has redeemed us and brought us into his life, his favor, his blessings for a special purpose. That he's changed our position. That he's changed us who we are to be more like him day by day. So I don't know about you, I don't identify with the world no more. But I identify with the most high God because he's changed us and made us different. I don't know about you, but I got something to testify about. And my testimony means something. Does your testimony mean something? I don't know about you, but we need to learn how to speak up and speak out on the goodness and greatness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The world does not win over my testimony. The world does not win over your praise, but we got to say something, y'all. Everybody else in this world is speaking up and speaking out of, of what they love and what they like to do. But where we at? Where we at, y'all? We got to speak up and speak out on the goodness of our God. I don't know about you, but my God is awesome. My God is great. My God is merciful. My God is loving. My God is kind. And guess what? I got to tell somebody. My God. That's my God. This is your God. We got to speak up, y'all. We got to speak up. We got to speak up. As I'm studying and getting into this portion of Scripture, and I'm looking at how Paul went to zero to 100 real quick. Real quick. He opens up in the first two verses, and it says who he is. You may be seated. Unless y'all want to stand. I'm telling y'all, I've been waiting to get this shout out all night, boy. I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all. Man, y'all don't know what this word has done to me over last night. Man. Man. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Our God is awesome. So Paul goes from zero to 100 real quick. The first two verses, he's telling who he is and his apostleship and who he's writing this letter to, the church in Ephesus. And then verse 3, the first four words, all praises to God. Zero to 100, real quick. All praises. Why? Because he's worthy. God is worthy of us speaking up and speaking out about who and what he means to us and what he has done for us. And it's only through what the grace has been given through his son, Jesus Christ, that this can happen. And Paul recognizes that. All praises unto God. And, and, and I like how he does. I said, Paul must have been really excited because I'm getting excited. And I don't know about y'all, I, I can get my praise on all by myself upstairs in the loft. How many of y'all love praising God by yourself? Get used to it. Don't let me be the only one on a Saturday night when I could be out in the streets running with the homie somewhere. But God got me at home all by myself fellowshipping with him. And we all need to learn how to fellowship with God so we can do exactly what Paul is talking about right here giving thanks and giving praise unto the most high God, who is what? The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's given us something very special, y'all. Given us very, something very special. Here's what I want to share as we get into this, this portion of Scripture. Before I get into my four points, I, want to make, I, I got to lay out some things. To give a testimony. It's mostly used even then and now to give a testimony in a law of court. That you are under oath and you're supposed to be telling the truth after you laid your hand on that Bible. But we know some people about that lying, 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 lying. And they think that because they got their book, they're all right. No, no, no. Just lying. But for us, you got to remember, we are always under some type of scrutiny and accusation. The world is our court. But yet, do we have enough to say and speak the truths? of God and what he has done for us, that we have to speak and, and express ourselves on the things which God has done for us on our behalf through his son, Jesus Christ. It's also called being a witness, which confirms the truth to be so. It is what it is. What God has done for me, it is what it is. It is what it is. When we look at the scriptures, it tells us what our truth ought to be giving our testimony. Why does our testimony and praise matter? 
Why does it matter? Our praise is to speak well of something or someone. It's to celebrate by praising. To give what it, God is entitled to. He's entitled to receive blessings from mankind. He's entitled to it. Guess what? I want to give God what he's entitled to because of what he has done for me. And I don't know about y'all, sometimes we can kind of dwell on the things. And, we, and it's nothing wrong with us telling the world how God has delivered us and saved us and rescued us from harm, sicknesses, disease, poverty, joblessness, homelessness. That's great. But that's not the end all and be all. God has saved us to live beyond our experiences here on earth. And sometimes we forget the blessing in which Jesus has given to us and given his life on Calvary. Because I know my salvation is worth a lot more than the good, bad, indifferent, or ugly, great, whatever is going on down here. And I have to think beyond what this world provides. Again, good, bad, and ugly because all of it is just temporary. God is trying to get us to start to think about the eternal things. The, the eternal things that we cannot experience down here, and it's already begun to change in us. What we don't realize is that, guess what? Now that we are saved, we got heaven with us already. We got a piece of heaven already with us, but it's our job right now in our present existence to act like I'm in heaven already. He's blessed us to have the kingdom within. I got to act and walk like I'm in the kingdom already. That's what we got to do. That's what I got to do. And we have to do it with great intention. But at the same time, while we're going through down here, give God what he's entitled to. Bless him because it's, our blessings are a gift because of the gifts he's given us. Now, I can never repay God. You can never repay God for the things that he's done for us. But I can show tell him thank you. Yeah. I can tell God thank you even for the little things. I had a a bowl, y'all know I like to talk about the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and stuff. <laughs> but this day I came in hungry. I had a brand new box of <laughs> some raisin bran <laughs> up in the cabinet. They, they hadn't even cracked the seal yet. I got it, looked at that box, I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about to go down. <laughs> I got this big old Tupperware bowl. And my, I know my wife was looking at me. He about to eat half the box. <laughs> I poured that raisin bran in there and hit it with that milk. Now, some of y'all may not like the way I eat cereal, but I let it sit there for a minute. I like my raisin man mushy. You can get more on the spoon that way. I like my, hey, that, hey I, I eat my food the way I want to, and y'all eat y'all food the way you want to. But I know this, it was a blessing to have me a bowl of some Raisin Bran Crunch. It was the bomb, y'all. It was the bomb. Almost as good as those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But God is old, our blessing. He is owed this, is due to him. And here's the thing, as we look at this, this, these verses 3 and 4 out of Ephesians 1, that God wants to bless us in an awesome way. And actually, he already has. Because the word says, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with who? Christ. With Christ. Here's, here's the thing behind that. This is when I got chills last night. Because God has saved us for himself, blessing us, giving us a gift. But we have, this is what we have to think beyond and greater than even just our salvation because some things come along with it that we are privileged to have because Jesus died for us and we, say, we have accepted the invitation of salvation through his death, burial, and resurrection, bringing us into a new life that is a conducive and active because of what God has already started from way back when. But here's the thing when it talks about it with every spiritual blessing. Is that some? Every means all. But here's where I got them chill bumps when I looked at that every. That's every piece of things which we get along the line in this life. 
one by one, piece by piece, making a whole into what God wants us to be. And that is consistent and, and, and constant how God is blessing us from heaven because it can't come from down here. This is why we can't focus on just having the temporary things because of what the Word is telling us, all of those spiritual blessings that come from the heavenly realm can only come from God. It can only derive from heaven and be placed in us piece by piece by piece by piece, making us whole in Christ or through Christ because of Christ. Because guess what? We're going to make it. We're going to make it. But here's the thing. Are you testifying about it? Are you praising and blessing God about the piece by piece by piece by piece? Because I don't know about y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm growing from when, when, I, when I buckled down and truly accepted what God meant to me at 33 years old. Raised in the church, but it didn't click till I was 33. But then I began to reflect on the times before I was 33 and those piece by piece by piece by piece. And I began to know what it means to praise God. Because if it was up to the world, I wouldn't be here. If it was up to people around me, I wouldn't be here. If it was up to this world and the doctors that wanted to abort me, but my mother changing her mind because I had a twin in the womb with me, that's one piece. That's right. When I was supposed to go to Iraq and, and God said, no, nah, that ain't for you, that's another piece. But yet when he called me and I heard it at 33 years old, he said, you mind, that's another piece. And God just keeps giving more and more from him. From him. That's what it means to be blessed by spiritual things from the, from the spiritual realm. Because it's greater than us. And if we want awesome things, we have to have an expectation that God's going to give us something from him and him alone. That's, this is what, what God wants from us. Uh, uh, God is working on the inside to change. Oh, y'all remember that song? The Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what? What a change. It means something. That should be a simple song. Like, hey, why have I seen that simple song? But it means something now. Because I know I got the Holy Ghost working on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus is working on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. And we have to recognize it from time to time that peace by peace, because that's what work is. Peace by peace. And guess what? You can't do it by yourself. It can only happen because of Jesus Christ. Peace by peace, y'all. Peace by peace. We look at why these things are happening for us. Because what Jesus is doing is affecting us from the spiritual realm. To our soul. And the soul is going to, going to affect my mind. Once the mind is affected, it's going to affect my behavior and decisions. And once my behavior and my decisions are affected, it's going to affect my walk. And once my walk is affected, others are going to see my walk. But it's got to start from God, y'all. And we have to go through this process. It sounds like sanctification, don't it? God is sanctifying us, making us different day by day, piece by piece, be more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But guess what? You got to put in the work too. And recognize when God is working on you and you cooperate with God so the constant and consistent change will be made. What? And then at, at, at the end of this, this particular uh, portion of Scripture in verse 4, it, it, what does it say? It says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. That whole sanctification. Now, here's the thing. And I, ha I really had to say it to myself a few times earlier this morning. God made me holy, and he's making me holy. Sounds strange, huh? But that ain't come from me. That came from God. God is making, has made us holy, and he's making us holy. He has picked us out of this world, chose us for a particular reason, and it will be accomplished through the work he is doing in us. But in that process, we are working, too, to become more holy. This whole thing about being holy, and here's the thing, we don't talk about being holy enough. 
we have to have conversations about what holiness is. Holiness is just like our God without spot or wrinkle or blemish. That it, whatever he is, he is not a, a common God. He is not to be used, thought about, and worshiped in any old kind of way. And we have a lot of people in our society, even in the body of Christ, that think they can continue to live any kind of way they want to live and call themselves a Christian and follow Jesus Christ. It don't, the math ain't mathing. The math ain't mathing. Because if we're going through this process and being holy and without fault and blemish, God is doing a constant work and we ought to be gracious and thankful to God. And sometimes what's going to help us is that we got to speak up and speak out, I'm holy. I'm holy. Let that be part of your testimony and your praise. Why? Because my God is holy and he wants us to be just like him. Holy, separate from the world, different from the world. But we cannot walk and live any old kind of way and say that you are a child of the Most High God. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to the world. And this is a process I had to go through because Ricky was lying. And I had to come to grips with that. I was lying. And the Word of God had to straighten me out. I had to go to God in repentance and continue to go to Him in repentance. It's not enough just to say you sorry. you just a sorry liar. But when we have true repentance in us, you say, God, I, I don't want to do this no more, and I need your help. I'm confiding and confessing in you something's wrong with me, and I don't like it. And we go to God, and we confess it to him. And guess what? Now he will come to us and aid us in the change. This is what we got to do. So when we finally get to him, guess what? No more faults, y'all. No more faults. Now, now we can get into point one. Did I lay out a good foundation? <laughs> My God is good, y'all. Number one, don't hold back your testimony. Don't hold back your testimony. Don't zip it. Open it up. Don't zip it. Let's see what the Word has to say. Psalms 105 and 1. Let's read it together. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim His greatness. Let the whole world know what He has done. Let the whole world know. Let them know, y'all. Now, I'm sitting at Starbucks yesterday thinking about this, this portion. I said, Lord, I can't go all over the world. You're the only one that's omnipresent. Let the whole world know that you're in. Let your neighbors know. That's the world you're in. Let your household know. That's the world that you're in. Let your coworkers know. That's the world that you're in. Your whole world, the things that are going on around. That, let's, it, we can cover a lot of ground if you start giving your testimony. You start giving your testimony. You over there. Can you imagine? When I was in the Marine Corps, I was a field radio operator. My MOS was uh, number 2531. <laughs> and there's a thing which we talked about in using antennas. We had uh, unidirectional and omnidirectional. When we give our praise and all can hear around us, we are omnidirectional. But when we all get together and we give our testimonies, our omnidirectional starts to cover each other. I mean, we cover everything around us by giving our testimonies to a world that needs to hear it. And I don't know, you can be on AM or FM, but just give it. <laughs> FM means frequency modulated, and AM means amplitude modulated. I don't pick one. I want to be on FM, it sounds better. <laughs> but we need to get out there and be omnidirectional with our testimony and our praise. When we give thanks, under God. Don't hold back. It is our testimony in Him delivering us from sin, hell, and utter death in a sentence, and a dead soul, a life without Him in it. We ought to be talking to two different people as well. You look at this portion of Scripture where it says, giving thanks to who? And then it says what? And proclaim His greatness and let the what? Whole world. We're talking to two people in our testimony and our praise. Two individuals, 
One being God, because I'm talking about me, he hears me. And the other being, you telling other people. It's knocking out two birds with one stone. I am letting God know that I appreciate him. He hears me talking about him. But I'm letting others know of the greatness and the goodness of God in which he has displayed on me and my miserable life. A life without him is miserable. A life without him is a dead life. But we have to tell somebody and give our tongue. What y'all scared of? What you scared of? Don't be scared to give your testimony to anybody. Don't be scared. Or am I just talking to myself? Ricky? <laughs> Ricky? Yes, sir. Don't be scared. You got it. We have to be able to speak up and, and, and speak out because of what he has done. Acts 17, 28. Let's read together. For in him we live, move, and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Here's the awesome thing about what Paul is doing. And we've heard a lot of people say, in him we live, move, and have our being. Y'all know that's not scripture, right? Here's what Paul, the apostle Paul, was trying to do. Because at this point in time, if you're familiar with that 17th chapter in the book of Acts, Paul had just been rescued out of Berea because they were going to try and kill Paul. He made his way into Athens, Greece. And while he's there, he's doing a little sightseeing. He sees all these temples and buildings that were dedicated to all these pagan gods. Paul was well-versed in Greek mythology. He's reciting their own stuff against them to let them know they're serving the wrong god. So when he tells them, we live, move, and have our being, that was actually in a Greek hymnal that was dedicated to Zeus. A lot of us don't know that, do we? So what Paul was doing was using reverse psychology on them to let them know that you are serving the wrong God. You got, you're saying the right stuff, but it's to the wrong God. And sometimes we have to be able to do the same thing in using reverse psychology on the things which people say and do, use what they say against them to get their attention, to point them to the true and only wise God. And this is what the Apostle Paul was doing. And the, the individual that made this particular hymn, his name was Aratus. He used Aratus' words against the, the Greek people to point them to God, Yahweh. That's what he did. And we can't be scared to point people in the right direction, even using their information. We have to be able to do that. But here's the thing. you got to become a student, not only of Scripture, but you got to become a student of the things and religions around us. You have to become a student of it. I, I'm glad I took a, a world religious uh, class. I'm glad I did because it put me up on game. Anybody ever just been put up on game? Knowing what was going on in the world, you got to keep your ears to, 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 to the pavement. And it's not that uh, we, are, we will try, you know, the devil going to try and suck you in, but I know why I need to learn these things. Because I had to be able to use what they had and know to show that it in itself is false in its, in its religion, false in its theology, false in its belief systems, but at the same time, I'm going to use it against you. I'm going to use it against you. Don't be afraid to testify. Don't be afraid, y'all. Don't be afraid. Here we go. Two. He says, we have a new life in Christ and a new positioning with Christ. New life in Christ, new positioning with Christ. First Peter 1 and 3, it reads, let us read together. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead now we live with great expectation. Who got some great expectations? Great expectations. Those four words came back up again, right at the beginning. So Paul, the apostle Paul, and Peter on the same page. What was it? All praise to God. He's worthy. He is worthy of being acknowledged because of what he has done. This is what, he, what he's done for us. It is by his great, not just regular old mercy, great mercy. 
great mercy. I don't know about you, but I appreciate God's mercy. Because here's this, this, this thing about mercy. Mercy itself is still a grace and it is also a derivative that's strongly connected to grace. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. I deserve a death penalty. I deserve to be on the highway to hell because of my own personal sin that I committed. But because of God and his great mercy, he saved me at the nick of time. Great mercy. Bishop was talking about your eyebrows being sins last week. Oh, yeah, I lost my eyebrows and look, lost my hair too. But out of his great mercy, he has saved us. And what has made us what born again? Given us a second chance. That we are born anew because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. I don't know about you. We ought to embrace being born again in Christ Jesus. We ought to embrace being made anew. That our slate has been wiped clean. That he remembers our sin no more, but has given us a new life in him. And now we have a great opportunity to walk in what God has already proven in us out of his mercy. And this is what God has done for us. I don't know about y'all, but God, oh man, I appreciate him. I appreciate him. I appreciate him for allowing me to be born again into his kingdom and into his family. Do you appreciate him? I just had this urge to talk about my Jesus today. And what he has done. All the other stuff is, is just icing on the cake. But when Jesus died on the cross for our sins on our behalf to wipe our slate clean and give us a new opportunity to express the love of his Father unto us, he is awesome. He's worthy. 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 Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy, y'all. Oh, my God is worthy. Oh, my God is worthy. My God is worthy. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, God saved me, y'all. He saved me from me. I was destined for hell. But my God, my God, my God, my God. It's my God. My God, y'all. It's my God. And because he saved me, I like what it says at the end of the verse. We have great expectation. So whether money is here or money ain't, a house is here or a house ain't, it doesn't matter because the expectation is not with the things down here. The expectation are the things that are in heaven, in glory. That's the great expectation. I'm expecting God to give what he promised because I believe by faith on the name Jesus Christ. If you believe by faith on the name Jesus Christ, you ought to have some great expectations. Great expectations. I don't know if we're going to make it to the end, y'all. Here's some of the most stuff from heaven. 1 Corinthians 1.30, here's what it says, y'all. But it is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God and the righteousness and the sanctification and the redemption. You can't get that here. You can't get that here. You cannot get that here. That God uh, uh, gives us all these things so we can continue to progress in him. That all these things have been made readily, readily available to us and us alone. The world can't get this unless they believe and put trust on the name Jesus Christ for what he's accomplished on Calvary and dying, giving his blood. 
He gave his blood for payment. And the only way that you can receive any of these things from God, you got to accept the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood that paid for my sin. It is the blood that was paid to redeem me from my sin. It is the blood that saved me, but it's the blood that, that gives me identity in Christ. And it's only by his blood. And Jesus, only because of what he has done. Guess what? I got the wisdom of God. I got the righteousness of God. I got what? What else? Huh? Sanctification. I'm getting better and better, piece by piece. I got the sanctification, and guess what? I'm still redeemed. I'm still redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah, you better believe it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if he does something to you, how come you ain't testifying? How come you're not speaking up on the goodness in which God has presented to you? How come you ain't saying nothing, people? You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. We are the family of God. Say something. Say something. Number three. All of us have been chosen. It is not a coincidence, y'all. It's not a coincidence. Or by chance. It didn't just haphazardly. You didn't stumble into salvation. God had you in mind a long time ago. God had hard head, bald head Ricky in mind a long time ago. He had everybody bad in your family in mind too in, in, in mind already. Here we go. I'm going to try to hurry up, y'all. I got six minutes, 25 seconds. <laughs> Here's what Jesus says in John 15, 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you <laughs> that you should go and bear what? Fruit. And that your fruit should what? Remain. And that whatever you ask of the Father <laughs> in my name, he may give it you. Is this stuff coming from heaven again? What kind of fruit? Spiritual fruit. Y'all familiar with Galatians 5, 22? Those nine fruit of the Spirit, he wants us to bear. I like what the King James says, much fruit. Whole lot of it, an abundance of it. And God wants us to thrive in those things. And God, Jesus says, you with me, but you got to be connected to the vine. Got to be connected to the vine. You got to stay connected to Jesus in order for your fruit to continue to multiply and be. And here's the thing, your fruit aren't to help you. Have you ever seen a tree eat its own fruit? Never. Not never. Your fruit are not for you. Your fruit are to be a blessing to those that are around you. And that's part of your... Li now, here, here, here's another way we can testify. Lifestyle. My lifestyle are to speak loudly. Not just what I say. Here, here's what happens. How are you going to tell somebody about Jesus? You live in a sinful life. They even to believe you. They have every right to call you a liar. They have every right. But when you live in it and you walk in it, I think they'll be a little more inclined to hear what you got to say. So let your fruit be a blessing to others as well. Here we go. 2 Timothy 1 and 9, it says, I have, he says, he saved us and called us to what? A holy life. Not according to what? Our works, but according to what? His design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before what? Time began. Before time began, he had already made a plan, a blueprint, a layout for us to come into him. And he had already set up a program to make us better day by day, that sanctification, that we would become whole in him to be like him in his holiness, in his character, and in his nature. This is what God has done for us, and he already had it planned out before time began. Jesus, you mean you had me in mind before I was 33 years old? Yes, Ricky, I did. And he had you in mind as well. All right, three minutes, 40 seconds, let's go. Number four, testify of what God has saved us from and into. Here we go, y'all. <clears throat> this is where I got excited again last night, y'all, and the night before that. 
Here we go. It says in Revelation 21, verses 3 through 8, it says, Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and will, bear, will be, with, be their God. He will what? Wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. This, 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 this is what the old saints used to say. I'm going to a land of no more. I'm going to a land of no more. That God saved me to be with him and him with us. But it's a land of no more pain, a land of no more suffering, a land of no more being stressed out, a land of no more brokenness, a land of no more illness, sickness, and disease, a land of no more liars and cheaters. And yet that's where we are going to be because we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But guess what? This is what he saved us from. I'm going to keep going with this. Verse 5, it says, Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Right, because these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. My salvation is already done. The, re- the, the things in which I'm going to receive, they're already done. And then he, then, then he puts this signature on it. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That's my God. He said, I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of water of life. And here's where we come into play. I will freely give to, excuse me, the one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God. And what? He will be my son. I belong to Jesus. I belong to God. But here's what I like about this. Where I ain't going, where I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be with those. Here, here's what the Word says. He says, but the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Guess what, y'all? We ain't going to hell. We ain't going. We ain't going to hell. And according to the scriptures, before this, hell is not our final des- destination. That's just a holding place. Hell and death are going into the lake of fire. And guess what? We ain't going. 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 Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you we ain't going. Lord, I praise you because we ain't going. Lord, I thank you that we put our trust in your son, Jesus Christ, and we ain't going to hell. But Lord, I'm glad, according to your word, that we will dwell with you when that new Jerusalem shows up. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I ask that you would impress this on our minds that we get greater understanding of who we are in you, Father. We thank you for all things, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Pastor Rick a hand praise for that wonderful word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. God is awesome. God is mighty. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, y'all have a seat. I know y'all hype for the Lord. Y'all hype for Hosanna. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, we're fine. We're fine. Hey, we want to uh, we wanna, we wanna open up uh, the church doors. We will be remiss if we didn't open up the church doors. Um, If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please, now is the time. Now is the time. Right where you're at, the family just wants to invite you in. All you have to do is raise your hand and then just accept him. Who is him? The capital H, the capital I, the capital M. 
His name is Jesus. Is there one? Is there one that today will say, hey, this is the day that I draw the line in the sand and I become more like Christ and less like that old self. Anybody know about that old man, that old self? Is there one? Is there one that will give their life to Christ today? In the name of Jesus, he's calling you. If you just listen, he's calling right now. Is there one? Right where you at, just raise your hand. You're amongst family. There's nothing to fear. You have everything to gain from coming to Christ. Will you come right now? Is there one? Just raise your hand. Amen. I see you, sister. Hallelujah. I see you. I see you. Hallelujah. Is there another? Is there another? Please do not wait. Please don't wait. Is there another? Is there another? Praise God, brother. I see you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to leave here the same way that you came. You can battle today against those dark demons. Is there another? Is there another? Please, my sister. Please, my brother. God is calling you to be who you really are. Who he's making you to be. Who you already are. Will you agree with him today? Is there another? Is there another? Amen. Amen. We've done our stuff, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, right where you're at, we want to we want to lead you in a prayer to Christ. Uh, the family, we're going to join in and say it with you. Y'all just repeat after me. Father God, we love you. Please forgive us for our sins. We recognize that your son died for me and rose for me and is coming back for me. And Lord God, I want to be ready. So right now, in this very moment, in this very place, I give my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, my everything to you. You already had it from the get-go. Now I submit all things to you. Come into my heart and save me. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we all say amen. 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 Welcome to the family. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Our ushers are coming right now. We want to give you a new believer's Bible. Um, please. Uh, it doesn't stop here. It starts here. Yes, yes. Because as soon as you walk out, the devil's going to try to get you. But no weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. Ain't that what we said, Minister Lynn? Yeah, 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 yeah. So please. Get with the church. Bishop says all the time, if crossword doesn't float your boat, right? Please, as long as you get with the church that is all about Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. But you can always come to crossword. Love y'all. You got to say it, all right? All right, all right. Are we good? Anything else? Mr. Ray? Mr. Lynn, anything else? Well, come on, y'all. Let's stand. Let's touch. Let's agree. We're about to... Oh, offering. Well, y'all hold up for a minute in the name of Jesus then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, our ushers are in line. They was like, you better. Uh -huh. Hey, our ushers are in place. Please give. Um, uh, th this is how the lights stay on. Hey, and here's the thing. You're giving what God has already given you. Do you know that it's all his from the giddy up? So please give. I promise you, you can't outgive God. Our ushers, come on, y'all. Let's rock for him. Hallelujah.
stretch your hands toward these tithes and offerings. Father God, we just thank you for the glorious privilege that we had to sow into this kingdom. Lord, we thank you for blessing us all week long and providing for us. We thank you that these tithes and offerings are going to go forth and be used to build your kingdom. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, Crosshair, let's stand. Let's touch. We're about to leave this place with never his loving kindness. Hey, hey, uh, uh, I think, I think, did, did, did Pastor Rick just give a devil a black eye today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, y'all keep him in prayer. You know he got, he got to go one more again, right? He got one more again, huh? Because the devil keeps coming back at you, right? But we ready. We ready. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's look to the Lord. Our Lord, our God, we praise you for the wonderful word that you gave us today, Lord God. Lord God, it hit right where we need it, uh, right in the heart, Father God. Now we just want to leave here and apply it, Lord God. Lord God, we know that we are already in your arms, and can't nobody pull you from us, Father God, and, and, and can't nobody snatch us from your right hand, Father God. So please, as your family leaves, please keep them in your loving care, Father God. Father God, as they head out on these highways and byways and get ready for this rough week, Father God, we know that it's going to be beauty in the struggle because you already got the week count canceled in victory for us, Father God. Father God, keep them, love them, watch over them until we meet again in this wonderful pace, Father God. Let them keep their eyes stayed on you, your son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide both now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said amen. 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 Hey, we love you, Cross Roy. Shake somebody's hand on the way out. Smile at somebody, because that's what Jesus would do. Hallelujah.